If you want to make effective promotional graphics, there are many things you should consider to achieve a better result. You need to aim for a certain balance between readability and attractive, eye-catching elements. These are the main concepts that I'm going to demonstrate this time in GIMP. All these methods have a Photoshop equivalent as well, if that is more so your thing. So one of the first rules of readability is to use a fairly simple font. It's definitely better to pick something that is simpler than something that has a lot of extra style to it that may not be quite as readable. I was trying to find a good example in my list of fonts really quick, but you should be generally trying to avoid anything that has too much stylization to the letters in favor of something that's simple, bold, and readable. Just a very simple sans serif style font is exactly what you need. You don't really need much more fancy than that. You can have a little bit of fun here, but just don't go overboard with it. So the text tool here in GIMP can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. First you gotta draw the bounding box, and if you want to resize the bounding box, sometimes it can do some weird glitchy kind of stuff. The other thing that can be kind of weird about it is the font and the font size. It tends to remember what your previous font size was and kind of hang on to that. And I found probably the best way to combat this is to just start typing whatever you're going to type and then go back through and select all the text and then change the font size to whatever you need it to be to fit the space. Again, if I wanted to move this down, then it might do something weird like that. Just hit Control and Z to undo. If you aren't already very familiar with that shortcut, then get very familiar with it. Control Z is the undo for most programs. And for some reason, after you undo that change, then this handle at the top starts to act normally as it should. I'm not sure why that happens. It must just be some sort of a strange glitch. So besides using a good font, the next best thing that you can do to improve the readability of your image is to outline the text. This is a little bit simpler and a little different workflow in Photoshop, but it's also very possible in GIMP and not super hard. There are a few ways that you could go about it, actually. So the first method that I learned, you go up here to Layer, and you go Text to Path, and that turns this text layer into what they call a path. What that is exactly doesn't matter right now. So next we just go over here to Select and Select From Path. So we're selecting the outline of all these letters. Then we select grow, and then we grow the selection. It lets you choose how many pixels you grow the selection by. I think four to eight is usually pretty good. That's kind of a wide outline, but it will demonstrate my point better. So the next thing that we need is a new layer, and we just have the new layer filled with transparency, and then we reorder it so it goes underneath the text. Hopefully you're following along. There's a lot of steps, but it's not that difficult. Next, we have the Bucket Fill tool, and we want to select black for the color. And we just make sure that we're on that new layer we created, and we just click somewhere inside. And you'll see over here on the left, it will say the affected area for the bucket fill, and we just want to make sure this says Fill Whole Selection. So whatever the selection is, the entire thing will be filled when we click. Now we can select one. You'll see that it looks pretty good now. So let's undo all of that, and let's Control Z to undo. And the other kind of easy way to do this is to come up here and grab the Select by Color tool. And then we'll just make sure we have our text layer selected. And then we just click over here on the white of the text, and that will select everything that is the same color. And there's a threshold that we can adjust over here. It's a pretty useful tool to get used to in GIMP, but especially when putting an outline around text. I learned the other way first, but this is becoming my preferred method. So once we have that selection done, we can just come up here and grow the selection. I think the 8 was a little too thin in hindsight, so we're going to go with 12 this time. And again, we also need to add a new transparent layer that we can paint the outline of the text onto. From here out, it's all the same. So now we just get the bucket fill, we make sure that we're filling the whole selection, we make sure that we're on the transparent layer, and we just let it rip. And now we have an outline around our text very easily. And this one trick alone will be the one step that makes your flyers much more readable than before if you weren't aware of how to do this. Or maybe you were going through a giant painstaking process to do this in a more difficult way. This helped me out a lot. Hopefully it will help you out a lot. Anyway, moving on. You want to make sure you double check the event info and the spelling on everything, especially band names. My band name is misspelled on flyers constantly, and I cannot stand it. Now you could skip a lot of the text editing parts. You could incorporate band logos or official graphics wherever you can. Reach out to everyone who is performing, hosting, or funding the event even, and ask them to provide their logo in a PNG format, or a link to somewhere online that you can screenshot it. Okay, so now let's talk about the background. We want to keep the background simpler. Don't use anything that will clash with the text or the logos too much. Aim for some sort of contrast or separation. There are several methods I like to go about doing this. 
You could start simply by selecting the background layer and then desaturating it, either completely or partially. There's a menu here that provides you with a few options. Adjusting this opacity slider will make it more or less desaturated, so you can take away all or part of the color. There's a few different modes you can choose from luminance, luma, lightness, average, or value. And you see they all have slightly different of an appearance to them. I don't want to explain each one here. In the end, you're really only worried about one thing, whether it looks good or not. So let's undo the desaturate. And then there's another one I like to use, which is called posterize. I love using this one in particular because it can instantly make almost any photo look like band graphics. What it's actually doing is reducing the amount of colors that the image contains. This almost always yields a pretty cool effect. So we can even use the posterize in conjunction with the desaturation. And I'll show you another way you can go about this. Select the hue saturation. And that should be pretty much so a no-brainer. Just turn the saturation all the way down on the image. And it basically has the same effect as the desaturate filter we were using earlier. So if you wanted to, you could also add some blur to the background layer, which would further separate it from the foreground elements, and it would create even more contrast between the two. A little bit goes a long way here, and just a little tiny bit of a Gaussian blur will suffice. Too much and it starts to look kind of weird, so we want to keep it just very subtle. Another cool effect I like to do is to add the vignette filter. This is in our filters menu, light and shadow, vignette. Mostly adjusting the softness and the radius will give you the most basic element of control here. Our flyer has this different aspect ratio, so you control that with the squeeze and kind of make it the right shape. All this is doing is just adding that effect where it darkens the edges of the image and it kind of gradually makes a transition from the dark edges to the center. And messing with the brightness and contrast level is one of the simplest and most effective ways to improve the focus and readability of an image. Where you choose to apply this and on what layer can have very different effects. You can do this on the background alone, if you just want to change how it looks back there. Or we could combine a few of these layers with the foreground elements. We want to make sure we're doing this towards the end of the process when we are sure we don't want to edit them any further, because we will lose the ability to edit the individual text and everything now that they're all merged together. But that also gives us the ability to control the brightness and contrast of all of our foreground elements at once. So we'll do this as kind of a last step here. It doesn't have to just be the brightness and contrast, you can make all sorts of changes at the end here, but I'm showing you possibly the most useful ones here. GIMP or Photoshop are very capable of a lot of different things, and I'm sure that if you use your imagination here, you'll come up with some pretty cool stuff. I would like to give a Patreon supporter shout out to John Johnson and our newest member, AJ Barbour. You could become a Patreon supporter too. Absolutely no pressure on that, but I greatly appreciate anybody who is willing to make a financial contribution to my lame little channel over here.